Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Praise the Lord, it's time to read the Bible again. We continue with Genesis chapter 32. Today we will study verse 30 to verse 32. Verse 30. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The word Peniel can be divided into two parts. Peni means facing, El means God. So together, Peniel means facing God. God is holy and just. After Jacob faced such God of holiness and justice, his life was spared. Therefore, he called the place Peniel. At Peniel, Jacob experienced the most important moment of his life. We, as God followers, also must personally experience what Jacob went through at Peniel. What is Peniel? Have you experienced Peniel? Dear brothers and sisters, after we are saved by God's grace, we realize that we are all sinners who need the Jesus Christ's precious blood to cleanse us. We are more sensitive towards moral sins. When we make mistakes, we easily come before God with Jesus' blood. Yet according to the Bible, sin does not only refer to moral sins. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So clearly, the definition of sin according to the Bible is falling short of the glory of God. This is to say that after we are saved and we become children of God, we must live a godly life. We must live a life that glorifies God. When we lack the glory of God in our lives or falling short of the glory of God, we already sin. Whenever we are not with God, we are in sin. We are not very sensitive. To this. Therefore, at Peniel, God dealt with Jacob not because of his moral sins, but because of Jacob's lacking the glory of God, and also because of his acting based on his natural or old self rather than relying on God. His natural or old self was still very strong and active. That is why when Jacob heard that Esau came to meet him with 400 men, Jacob believed that Esau was coming to kill him. Although Jacob said a beautiful prayer to God already, he could still not rest in peace. Acting based on his own mind, Jacob prepared nine groups of presents for Jacob. I mean Esau. Even after that, in the dark alone, Jacob could not rest in peace. Just then, Jacob came to wrestle with God. God was there to deal with Jacob's natural self. During the wrestle with God, Jacob was in the dark at the beginning. They kept wrestling until it was almost done. And when the light came in at daybreak, God touched his hip. So Jacob was halted because of his hip. At that moment, Jacob saw the light and realized that it was God who wrestled with him the whole night. Then Jacob called the place Peniel, meaning I was face to face with God. Verse 31, the sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. After the wrestle at Peniel, a fundamental change occurred in our life, which was we were halted upon our thigh. The femur bone was the strongest bone in our whole body. When the strongest part of our body was touched by God, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't be able to walk anymore. It means that we are crippled and we lost the ability to rely on our natural strength. We are marked by the sign of God. As God's follower, we must experience this crucial moment of Jacob's life. Yet this is a moment to be experienced internally deep within us. Often we judge whether a person is spiritual 
or not, or whether he or she is transformed or not, based on his or her external behavior. However, the real transformation takes place from within that person. The real transformation takes place when the old person's self was touched and halted by God. The crippled person still walks, still makes mistakes, still acts according to his or her instinct. But the right question to ask is, are you halted in your instinctive response? The importance of Jacob's experience at the fort of Jabbok cannot be emphasized more. We already studied it in great detail yesterday. Today, let's look at Jacob's wrestle with God at the fort of Jabbok with five questions. Have you ever wrestled with God like Jacob did at the fort of Jabbok? If you have answers to these five questions, perhaps... You already experienced God at Peniel. The five questions are, number one, why did God come to wrestle with Jacob in human form? Number two, God is the almighty God, but why couldn't he overcome Jacob? Number three, why did God wait for the whole night until daybreak to touch the whole socket of Jacob's hip? or to touch the hollow of Jacob's tie. Number four, why did Jacob was asked by God for his name? Number five, when Jacob asked God, why didn't, tell, didn't God tell Jacob who he was? Let's take a moment to reflect on our personal experiences. If you could answer these five questions looking back at your life congratulations you have experienced pineal let's review these five questions looking at god's wrestle with jacob at pineal when god draws you to him to follow him he appeared as the glorious god this was what abraham had experienced even when abraham was trying to have isaac through sarah god appeared as a friend to receive the feast prepared by Abraham. However, when God tried to mold you by dealing with the strongest part of your natural self, He appeared in your life in a human form. Who is this person? This person could be your spouse, your colleague, or your boss. God could be different persons, but only in human form to wrestle with you. How often we thought we were fighting with our spouse with our children but in fact we are wrestling with God it's just that oftentimes we lack the spiritual insight to discern once you realize that God puts us in the most suitable more appropriate surrounding you know the answer to the second question why couldn't God overcome Jacob was God capable of defeating Jacob? Of course, he was capable. Yet, God's purpose of this wrestle was not to defeat you, but to lead you out of the dark into the light. To lead you from blindsided to seeing. During the wrestle, God wanted to lead us to seeing our true self, our wickedness, and our need to be changed. Therefore, God is able to overcome, but He does not. He continued to wrestle with you. And when you wanted to give up, He even adjusted Himself according to your situation to reignite you and to allow you to endure the wrestle. For how long? For the whole night until dawn. Now move on to the next question at the daybreak. You were shined on and you started to the light. Only at this moment, God touched the socket of your hip, allowing you to realize that the toughest part of your body or your life was to be halted and thus could not be your support. It is our instinct to rely on our natural self. Everything we learn from this word, whether from home, from school, even from the society, 
is teaching us to depend on ourselves. As a result, our old selves become stronger and stronger. Relying on ourselves might lead us to many secular achievements and successes. However, our natural ability cannot help us in our spiritual growth. Therefore, God has come to wrestle with us only when there is light, only when we see the light. God touched the socket of our hips, leading us to see that our cells aren't even reliable. Only God is dependable. After our natural selves were touched by God, God asked us question, what is your name? At this moment, we have to realize and answer honestly that we are all named Jacob, that we are all born naturally grasping everything. In this dialogue with God, we see our true selves. Yet, God will change our names according to this wrestle from Jacob to Israel, from a grabber to the prince of God. Of course, we don't transform instantly to the prince of God, but God tells us not to depend on ourselves from now on because our true identity is the prince of God. Therefore, we must learn to be more Christ-like. Therefore, we must learn to grow the character of Christ within us. Perhaps we cannot achieve this at the moment, but in the future, since our natural selves have been touched and inhibited by God, we will live a limping life. When we want to act according to our old selves, once again, we would realize that we lost the natural ability to react and we could only depend on God. This way, God constitutes himself in us and we gradually transform into the prince of God. During the wrestling in his revelation to us, God wanted us to become Israel. In the process of transformation, if you ask God, please tell me your name, God will reply, why do you ask me my name? Because as you mature in life, naturally, you will know his name. His name change according to your experience. When you're down, his name will be comfort. When you're weak, his name will be empower. And when you're anxious, his name will be peace. Only when we see our true selves and realize that after God touched and halted us, we couldn't act and follow God with our natural ability that we may turn to God. God will constitute the immaculate characters of Christ in us. At the end of chapter 32, the Bible tells us that Jacob's limping because of his hip. Does it mean that Jacob's really didn't rely on his old self anymore? No, Jacob still acted according to his natural self only he was limping. We see that from now on, Jacob lived a life to subtraction, one by one. God removed the things that were important to Jacob. Unlike before the wrestle at the pineal, God kept adding to Jacob. Wives, concubines, sons, wealth, and all sorts of blessings. After the wrestle at Daniel, God started to take away from Jacob until at the end, all that Jacob had was God. Did Jacob win the wrestle with God or not? God said Jacob won. For he said to Jacob, because you have struggled with God and with man and have overcome. How should we say it? When we lost the wrestle with God, God won. If God won, then we won. Because we became the prince of God. 
But if we won the wrestle with God, meaning our old selves overcame the wrestle with God, we remain in the dark. And if daybreak did come, we wouldn't see the light. God hadn't touched the socket of our hips yet. Every saint who encountered God at Peniel will have a special mark. This person will become limping, or will be halted upon their time. Dear brothers and sisters, did you think your life remained a whole? Was your life ever broke into pieces? by God. When you face different situations, do you still react with your natural strength or every time when you reacting to different challenges, do you find yourself limping or halted upon your time? Christian's life is a life of emptying. Only when we dump our old selves out can God fill the empty space in us with His richness, which is the glory of God? We then will be able to live a life as the Prince of God. Verse 32. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. This first refers to the custom of the Israelites. It's believed that in, sorry, my Chinese, Kaifeng, Henan province, there live a group of Israelites. Although they look exactly the same as Chinese as you and me, they were actually Israelites' descendants. When they ate beef or lamb, they took out the tendon. They lived by this habit, which was different from the Chinese. Therefore, they were called, sorry again, Tiao Jin Jiao, which was believed to be a form of Judaism. However, verse 32 not only refers to a custom, but it also has a broader and deeper meaning. It means that after we were dealt with by God at Peniel, the tendon of our tie was twisted, and thus we weren't able to act according to our natural instinct or strength. Just like Jacob, after the experience at Peniel, he relied on his staff to walk for the rest of his life. For a man who encountered God at Peniel, God is his staff that he rely on. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for laying out Jacob's life clearly in front of us. There are many areas in my life that still need to be touched by you in the dark, through wrestling with the people and environment surrounding me. May you help me see my true self. May you touch my old self and help me follow you in my light. May you bless my day. May I please you. In Jesus' name, we pray.